I would be working a, you know, doing a shoot and we'd finish at, you know, three or four in the morning. And then about six in the morning, I'd be at Starbucks. You know, you want foam on your latte. Jay, we had this comment come in on our YouTube channel the other day, and I wanted to read it for you. And please, you're welcome to jump in at any time. It goes, I made my first and only 16 millimeter feature film in 1997 that cost me around $50,000 that I paid for out of my own pocket used credit cards, and borrowed money from my parents. However, unlike Rodriguez and Smith, my film was a complete and total failure. I wasn't accepted into any film festivals and wasn't able to get any sort of distribution. This cost me financially, including my future in having a career as a filmmaker, and 25 years later, I'm still dealing with the debt and financial instability from it. Mm. 50,000 is a lot of money for most people, let alone five million for a film. The reality for myself, and I know there are other aspiring filmmakers who've gone down the same path like I did, that you only have got one shot. And if you fail both financially and commercially, no one is going to invest in you or another film because why would they? Mm. No one invests in failed filmmakers. So like, here's what I'll say to that. I, and I don't, like I know where he's coming from, but he's sure. also coming from a completely like a different time. 97, shooting on film, yes. Yeah, that probably did cost a minimum of 50 grand to get something in the can. But um, today, it, it doesn't. Like it doesn't cost that much to make. It doesn't have to cost that much to make a feature film. And it, when, when we set ourselves up that, hey, I got one shot and it's this and it's over, like it almost is never gonna work out. In, in my experience, like filmmaking is a numbers game. You know, the people that, that, you know, break out, like get discovered and like take off on their first films, the Rodriguez's and the Tarantino's and Spike Lee and all of them, they're lottery winners. Like, like that, that is not the norm. Most filmmakers that I know, I know very few that did well in their first movie. Like almost, almost none. I, like I can't, I can't name any. I didn't. Actually, on the movies that I produced, it took me maybe four films before I was making like a profit, you know. But again, I wasn't spending fifty thousand dollars. Today, you know, you just you just got to, you know, set a smaller scale for what you're shooting. But you you can shoot a feature film for twenty thousand dollars. You can shoot a feature film for ten thousand dollars. You know, if you're smart. You know, if you, you pull in favors, you have gear, you can, you can do these things. We have our, we have, I have a phone in my pocket that has a better camera on it than the cinema cameras that I did my first like two or three movies on, you know? So today I, I just, I think that that, I think that one of the biggest problems with indie filmmakers, is they're still looking at the filmmaking landscape like it was 97, like it was 2005 and it's not, it's a completely different time. You know, there, there has never been a, a, a point in history where it's so easy to make movies. It can be so cheap to make movies and it's easy to get them out there, like on professional platforms. You know, now, you know, on the downside of that is everybody can make movies and there's a lot of content and we can get into that later. But I, I, I don't think it's an all or nothing. It should never be an all or nothing. Like I'm all in on this and that's it um, for, for me. You know, I'm, if that's the path someone chooses to take, you know, more power to them. But I personally think it's a numbers thing. If you make five movies, two are going to fail. You know, one or two are going to break even. And that fifth one is going to make enough to cover the other four. Excellent. And, and there's more of, of yep. this comment. And, you know, I appreciate this person for being candid enough to. Oh, to, totally, to, totally. And I, I think you do, too. And, um, and, and I feel like this is a probably, unfortunately, a common story. And I, I've heard from people that have spent actually double that. Oh, yeah. For their more. first film. And yeah. And we're in debt. And so, yeah, it's um, I appreciate them for, for leaving this. Um, the fact is movies cost money and they're a team effort and no one working on a film should work for free. Even though you can now shoot a movie on an iPhone, the fact is not everyone can afford an iPhone. People like this guy, and the commenter is referring to someone we're interviewing, like to talk about how easy it is nowadays and use what you have access to, but not everyone has access to the things people take for granted. Mm -hmm. I certainly don't have the money to make another film. Heck, 
I wouldn't even edit anything on my 15 year old computer, which I'm still using because I can't afford anything newer. People with money or access to money have no idea what it's like when you're living paycheck to paycheck, which is most filmmakers these days who are not already established. So I, yeah, yeah. I have a lot of empathy uh, for that statement. And I, I do, and I also, with everything I just said, I, you know, I want to, you know, make known that I, I do realize my, my privilege. You know, I, I, I did not come for money. You know, I, we, we come from minimum wage, you know, I, I've paid for everything myself, but I'm a healthy white male. I, I've, I've had a fairly easy go of it comparatively. Um, but th that said, I, I, you know, when I made my first movie, um, you know, uh, this was 2003 uh, that we shot it, summer of 2003. And I was working at Starbucks um, you know, so I was making, I don't know, five minimum wage, whatever it was, and some tips. I worked 35 hours a week and I was paying for college. You know, um, I was still able, like in that situation, to save a little bit of money myself and get a little bit on a credit card. And, you know, I think that first movie we made for about $4,000. You know, and it was me and a couple other friends and we kind of came together on it and put it together. And I know there are people that are in a position where, you know, they can't even like do that. You know, they're, you know, uh, you know, so people that start families early, um, you know, or uh, somebody that's disabled or somebody that has, you know, other responsibilities. I was a young, single, white guy and I didn't, you know, I, I had nothing to do but save up my money and pay for my college. You know, so, but all that said, it doesn't take that. I think people set up roadblocks for themselves when it comes to making movies because, you know, it's a scary thing. And I think sometimes people, it's easier just to say, hey, like it's too hard. I'm not going to do it than to like buckle down and do it, you know, and I like I, I, I buckled down, you know, and then and after that movie and that movie didn't make much money. And I was still broke and I was driving a 91 Ford Explorer and Katrina happened and I loaded up my Explorer and with what I had left and I drove cross country to LA and, you know, I surfed on a friend's couch for about six months and I couldn't get a job. I started working at Starbucks again and I, the entire, I worked at Starbucks through my first one, two, three, four, my first five movies. You know, so like I, I would I would work, I would save up a little bit of money, I would shoot, and then I'd save up a little bit more money and I would shoot again. You know, I would I would be working a you know doing a shoot and we'd finish at you know three or four in the morning, and then about six in the morning I'd be at Starbucks. You know, you want foam on your latte, you know. But <laughs> but like those are the kind of things if you, if you want to do it, if you are healthy, and you don't have you know, you know, four kids, you can make it work if you choose to make it work, I, I, I believe, in general. And so you were living in Louisiana at the time that you were, you were paying for college, mm -hmm. working at Starbucks there. Yes. And you, you managed to do that. And then once Katrina hit, you moved here, you drove. Mm -hmm. And would you ever run into people that you were working with on set while you were at Starbucks? Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's so like, yeah. So I, I would be, I remember I was on uh, my first movie and uh, the the first weekend we shot, we had a really big day. It was kind of a, a apocalyptic zombie movie. So we had this sequence set up in a self storage facility and we had like, oh man, something like 40 extras. I mean, it looked big, you know, and, and we were all in college. So, you know, we had a lot of college friends come and help. So we had a fairly like impressive looking crew and there was all these people here. It looked like a big deal, you know? And then, um, one, and one of the, one of the zombies, you know, I, I was talking to, and then you know, like the next day, um, you know, I'm, and I say nothing about working at Starbucks. Like, oh yeah, you know, I'm a big time filmmaker. And then, you know, the very next day they right in the drive through and they kind of looked, they did a double take and they didn't say <laughs> nothing, but it, it, it was, yeah. Yeah, and I had that happen many times. Sure, sure. And that was in Louisiana or here? That in was in Louisiana. Okay, yeah. right. In, in L.A., it honestly, I can't think of a situation where it happened. Because, I, you know, when I, when I moved to L.A., I was working at Starbucks in downtown Burbank. 
And, you know, I was shooting in, you know, Hawthorne or Hollywood. And I just, I just didn't, I, I don't remember running to anybody there, but I, I may have. Been there. Mm. Yeah. <laughs> 